It's Friday, May 3rd, 2024, as I had a good day for pretty much. You know, I have received good news that I do not have to report to jury duty service on Monday. I went to my backup AMC nor in the Northland to visit my Northland report peeps at my Starbucks, at my backup Chick-fil-A, and at my backup AMC doing a double feature. The first movie was Tarot. I'm learning how to pronounce these titles and things of that nature, um, especially when I'm, I'm trying to tell people what the movie is and whatever, and whatever the case may be. Um, and a movie like this actually, you know, kind of shows you what it's like from a spirituality aspect, regardless of whether we've ever, you know, had some type of horoscope reading or whatever the case may be, and that it's came, come to pass and things like that. Well, I give Tarot a 5 out of 5. Um, it may have mixed reviews. I consider myself a film critic, movie critic, whatever the case may be. Um, it may not have been its best, but yeah. Other than that, I mean, it's based on a book to the best of my knowledge of my most recent research. And other than that, it's like, well, you, we've seen this before. Of course, they, even if it's from a book or some other material, a lot of times lately, the movies are always the same, the same plot and all of that, regardless if the material is original or a reboot, sequel, or whatever the case may be. Um, the second movie I was able to see was Thabo and the Rhino Case. Yeah, in the Rhino Case. Uh, um, long title. To the best of my knowledge of, of my most recent research, it's a book movie as well. It's mostly centered around uh, kids and family in like a Africa African safari, pretty much, where somebody is poaching and the uncle gets framed or something of that nature. I gave that movie a five out of five as well, and I and I had a private screening. You know, and I'm not surprised, even though it was like, they opened up at 12, the first movie was at 12, and then the second movie was at like 150. So, as one movie ended, the other movies uh, were starting, especially in the previews, it was already starting. Which was good timing, you know, especially when I'm trying to ride the bus and stuff like that, grab me some Chick-fil-A on the way home. Um... Yeah, the other, if you want to say that I have bad news, it would be that I've actually uh, exhausted my resources financially, you know. Um, for me to listen to God as my only financial resource is like, well, God, you don't want me to work a job. You want me to be self-employed, but at the same time, it's like you won't provide for me the way I want to see you provide for me. Um, and a lot of people, they, they don't know what is actually going on with me. And even if I were to tell you what's going on with me, you wouldn't help me anyway. You, you, would, you would tell me to apply for a job or do something that you're doing to um, make money or whatever the case may be. You know, the uh, overthinker, ver new version, new me of me, you know, new me is like, people have to realize you're very lucky that I'm not the type to be a Robin Hood. You know, I look at it like that because it's like, once the good guy does something bad, you have to be forced to learn a lesson behind it. You know, but thankfully, I'm not one of the street guys that you expect me to probably be. You know, I'm not really plugged in like that. 
I might know people, they might know me, but I'll, yeah, I'm not really plugged in like that. I barely know what the, what the heck I'm doing nowadays anyway. Um, but yeah, like you have to, you, you have to really understand like on a spiritual level for me to really be saying yes to God and work for God and doing my best to please God and be obedient to him. It's not about the world systems or the human systems or mindsets that, you know, people project on myself where I have to relearn a lot of stuff, be more receptive of what I, I like and what I want out of life. And not what somebody else wants for me, especially when they are low vibrational and most likely, you know, hiding in the closet, hiding in the basement, probably don't even help other people, have never seen their bank account go to zero, have always been given everything to them and have never been told no. You know, for me to be the man of the house, watching out after everybody, their mama, kids, and things of that nature, being disrespected by children, teenagers, adults, and their parents. You know, it's like, um, even family, and the family friends, and the family friends' kids, and whoever the stepkids and immediate family and extended family and first cousin, second cousin, third cousin. I don't know. I don't give a fuck. Like, who gives a fuck? But, yeah, it's like, after my parents died, I'm an orphan. I'm pretty much, even though I'm pretty much the oldest child of both of my um, parents, They've been gone for a while. You, you you would think somebody would be like, how's Gerard doing? You know what I'm saying? And I'm not going to reach out to them. You know, um, I do my best to, you know, be of love and moral support from a distance. Because if I go around certain people, it's going to mess up my spiritual journey. And it's going to make me crash. So, yeah, I don't want people to think I don't love them and things like that. Yeah, you're going to make me crash and I'm going to probably act a fool. That's exactly why I don't want a job. Because I'm, I'm going to probably crash and act a fool. Then, you, then you'll see me on the news. So, yeah, that's why a lot of us, like I'm an introvert pretty much. In past, I've been used and abused and all of that, and I'm learning how to overcome and forgive and things of that nature so I can tap into my past and follow my dreams and see myself on a red carpet. And don't think that I'm not held accountable because I also feel led to talk about tough, tough love because I actually wrote my daily post for Friday called that, and I believe God was giving me the words to write the post. Um, but yeah, I do receive tough love mostly from my rapport peeps. Whether it's my a main AMC, backup AMC, or people who know me in the community or in things of that nature. Who are look are, are always looking for me, are always glad to see me. I am shown accountability and tough love, especially from a lot of women, to the best of my knowledge, as of lately. You know, I, you know, like, men in general, yeah, we engage, but I engage more with women. That's usually who I see first, I believe, honestly. Even whether it's, like, morning or afternoon, because that's what my routines are usually based upon, mornings and afternoons. I'm usually running to a woman, even though I'm called to men. So it's like I can only do so much inspiration and motivation to to men when I'm not in the right environments to engage 
the t the male teen, especially the male teenagers, the male young adults, all the way to like my age and my thirties, and even the um older adults who are about my age to to what you no know, daddy and grandpa age, you know. So like you have to get it and respect me and my boundaries. Otherwise, you can do the work for me and and take a percentage out of what you're earning since you're working for me, so to speak. I'm not into all of this well multi level marketing crap. You know, I am an entertainer. Treat me like one. Respect me like one. Pay me like one. Don't just throw me back on some part-time toxic job just to make me crash and, and destroy the place and probably harm others in the process. Don't, don't manipulate me into crashing and burning. While you, as even though you're the suspect, you also are the victim. While you try to make me the suspect, you know I've been victimized too much by people who think they're doing something. You think you're better than me? You're not. You're not. I'm still here. Even going through my little mental issues and overcoming them. A lot of stuff is coming back to me. You know, a lot of my spirit is coming back to me. It's like, well, God, you got, it was, you made a way for a jury to really be canceled. I need you to manifest my pro provision. For some reason, I feel it's a kind of like post my bank account when there's nothing in it. It's like, oh, you want to you want me to tell all my testimonies uh, and stuff like that. Usually, if I was somebody that you prefer to look at all the time, like an industry rapper, I wouldn't have to go through all of that hardship and things of that nature. Yeah, I wouldn't. You you, you prefer a certain type, and it's like. Yeah, I, I could see that being the case. Being shadow banned and stuff like that. Yeah, I could see that being the case. Yeah, God wants me to, you know, test my faith. Men, women, child can't be uh, the ruler over my life. That And that's the part where I get to fight back and I get to claim self-defense too because people are very irritating and frustrating and really love to drain people of their energy. You know, hey, you love me, you reciprocate me with money, time, energy, effort. Give something because that, that's what real love looks like to me. You reciprocating. You really appreciate me. You actually encourage me and say, I like what you're doing, something. Because every time I look up, it's negative. Can't You can't really tell if people are empathetic or sympathetic. You'd be like, are you really jocking me right now? And you, every time I make a random post, you are jocking me because you don't like it? I'm over here acting like I don't know what that means, but I think I do for the most part because I actually said it, even though I will have to look it up again to make sure because I've actually read it before. So, yeah, but it's like, why are you jocking me, bro? If you look up to me, if you're inspired by me, don't be jocking me. You know, if you want to help, help. Don't jock me. Don't know why I'm on this subject or topic or seeing this. But yeah, don't be riding me just because you love, you like me and you can't really say it. You can't really admit it to yourself because you're a narcissist that, that, that I inspire you, I motivate you, that I'm very attractive and beautiful and sexy as hell. I get all the guys, I get all the girls, you know what I'm saying? So like, I have to speak highly of myself, just like I told my little AMC mama. It's like, hey, I bought these sunglasses last weekend. 
Um, people already know I'm famous. They they can really, you know, ask, am I famous and things of that nature once I start uh, ch changing up my appearance. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, okay, guys, for me to get human interaction, even to pay bills and eat, I still need money. So, yeah, God, I, I pray for this supernatural money that you done gave me. I haven't forgot about that. What, 50000 <laughs> Yeah, God, $50,000. I haven't forgot about it. You know, this is for, you know, motivational, inspirational purposes. But, yeah, it's like I'm giving and giving and giving. Don't see the return on it. You know, and people want to hijack my life and don't want to, you know, trust their process and don't want the finished product. You know? I, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm tired of being in this wilderness and mental warfare, spiritual warfare. Even right now, my body is worn out, honestly, you know. And at the same time, I still have to drag myself to bed, drag myself out of bed, come outside of my house, you know, see how everybody's doing. Let allow people to actually see how I'm doing and be honest about it and speak my mind. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I don't want to shut people out just because people have to basically, literally, forgotten about me, torn me down, taken from me, manip manipulating and lying to me. If you owe me money, pay it back. Because God remembers. God knows. I didn't really forget. Even cash out shows receipts. Even emails shows receipts. You can't scam people forever and think you won. Yeah, because people like me will get revenge. Whether it's through karma and God doing it or if we show up at your front door. So if somebody like me, you think I'm so sweet. I'm actually the one that you should be scared of when I ever get the chance to be in your city. Especially if you're the pastor of a church and you begged and begged and begged and begged. This is the year of exposure. And nobody gets to suppress my voice because they are a suspect in my testimony. When God told me to speak, I spoke. I had to get on camera to do it as well. Not just type it and hide behind a screen. I can make videos or whatever the case may be once I learn how to improve my technology skills. But I can also reveal you through my testimony even without saying your name. If it fits you, it's you. You know, people like to, you know, irritate people just because something doesn't fit into them. And they just speaking in mind. You scared? Are they talking about you? We are talking about you. But you just made it known that you are the one that you feel like somebody's talking about you. Yeah. So your tough love is a matter of... Are you going to go with what somebody tells you? Or are you just going to stay where you are? Because when I go in person, you see me in person, I want to motivate and inspire you. I don't even care if you at work and you got a line. I, I try not to interrupt, you know, people when it's really busy. But once that line is empty and I have time before the movies, I will go 
talk to, you know, talk to him, whether it's mama, bro, sis, or dad, or whoever. You know, do we want to really retire from our jobs, or do we want to retire from our self-made businesses that we're leaving behind for our kids? I'll be 34 in a couple months. I want to retire now. You know, it, it, to y'all, it's far-fetched, but to me, it's not. That means you're scared that I can do better than you and travel the world, even starting more new businesses after I claim to have retired. Starting a family, creative, creating generational wealth, Taking on celebrity clients, political climates, rappers, singers, actors, the neighborhood at Thug, the prison dude, or somebody getting out of prison or jail or whatever, and actually want something out of life. You know, like, put our resources together. Put our knowledge and wisdom and understanding together. You know, when I was at my last job, I had some guy, I think he just got out of jail, prison, something. And I don't know what I said um, about having a, a business, or he, I think he might have mentioned it. I'm not sure. But he wanted, you know, my opinion on it, but I never got to see him again. He might be in the, in my city, I don't know. Um, or God may bring him into my path. I'm usually in the same area in the, anyway. So who knows, I might see him somewhere in my area or around the city. You know, I follow, I actually follow people right now that are in prison. Or come from the street life. And it's like. God why would you want me to. Be in the spotlight. And. Work with people that I have no real. What knowledge of how to approach them I guess. You know. Even though I'm from the hood, it's not, it's not like I talk to guys every day. I mean, I'm even trying to relearn how to communicate with other men and women and kids. It's like, well, how do you do this, God? And when do you end the conversation? You know what I'm saying? You know, just like the other day I was telling you about the... One of my guys that I reach out to every every day, pretty much, um, about being a good father and things of that nature. It's like, hey, you seeking me for assistance because I shine bright, because it's God, you know. I wouldn't be able to get on this camera and talk like this if it wasn't for God. You know, I have this love-hate relationship with God. I'm doing my best to get to know him better. Even though I'm, I, I, I swear I'm obedient. I swear I didn't pass every test and pass every trial and tribulation. But at the same time, I'm not sure. I'm, you know, I'm still working past, you know, not getting my way and things of that nature. You know, it's like seeing everybody else blessed and, hey, God, did you forget about me? Today's payday. Did you forget about me? You know, am I not saying the right words? Am I not sacrificing the right thing or doing, you know what I'm saying? Because as much as I want it to be about me, it's always about God. And then it's always about other people. It's never really about me. And that's why I'm I'm looking forward to taking my power back. Fighting back. You look at you look at me as an able-bodied person, but at the same time you bring me down and make me small. And I, after a while, after I probably stopped being small-minded or whatever the case may be, because I have really been dumbed down my entire life. 
that I realize that I'm at least 5'7", to the best of my knowledge, and not this 5'5", five, five or whatever that I probably grew up assuming, you know. I'm actually taller and bigger than I actually look. Especially when I look in the mirror, it's like, where did this height come from to where you never really knew your actual height? You know, lucky if I know how much I weigh. And I think it was the height that my mother had. And that I don't know if that's what I went off of or what, but it's like... Even in my 30s, I'm, it's like, hey, I've been through so much and trying to get my life back and stand up for myself and be a man and enjoy life. You know, and then have people think they know everything about me. You do not know everything about me and I wish you would stop trying to figure me out and figure yourself out like I do when I look in the mirror and I actually I talk to myself and as the prophet Blueman to what shall I wear today and stuff like that and seek God in the process. And it's like, God, are you there? Do you hear me? You know, sometimes I can hear God. Um, sometimes I have visions. You know, at the same time, I need a more level activation. That way I'm not profit and name only. Entertainer, trillionaire, life coach, manager, entrepreneur, self-employed, rapper, singer, songwriter, Celebrity, famous, pu uh, public figure, I most likely will be a politician or a community le leader or something of that nature. Yeah. The next this, that, and the other, of uh, whatever your favorite person is, in place, and things of that nature. in every industry. God has a plan, right? I believe he does. I hope he has a plan after this weekend because I believe I won't have money at all after this weekend. So yeah, whatever, whatever supernatural resource God has, for me, it's like, okay, God, I trust you. I do my best to be do what you ask of me. You know, scratch that. I, I trust you to, to so much of a limited ability. But yeah, we're working on all of that. And I do my best to love God and seek him without having to go through other people. Especially more nowadays, because I feel like I can't trust people. Can't really get a real answer from them. You know. All I can get is. Why are you posting this? Da, 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 da. Yeah. I like to be X-rated. What's the problem? You know. Y'all don't like to talk about sexuality. But then y'all like to do pause. And no diddy. How about yes diddy? You know, because sometimes y'all need to talk about it and stop being scared and cowards. And then you want to, you know, drown other people out because they are actually called to write about exotic or erotica type stuff. Whatever it's called. Sexually explicit stuff. But y'all be so scared to talk about it. Not me. God is giving me, you know, God is getting me in position. God is getting me in position to talk about it. And I got to stand up for myself and tell y'all no, because I want my bag. I want to, you know, work with little baby or whatever the case may be. I want my promise and I want to follow my dreams. You know. 
and I want to see myself on a red carpet and on every screen. Hashtag blue.